You're tuned into the Reading with Robin podcast. My guest today is Julie Buxbaum, the author of Tell Me Three Things and What to Say Next. Her brand new young adult novel, Hope and Other Punchlines, is just out. And Julie and I have known each other for quite a while, and we were talking earlier about our conversations about the opposite of love and after you. Her work has been translated into 25 languages. She lives in L.A. with her husband and their two children. Visit her at juliebucksbound.com, and from there you'll find her on Twitter, Instagram, everywhere, Facebook. Julie and I have been having way too much fun without all of you listeners. <laughs> going to now let the listeners in and chat. Welcome to the show, Julie. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so glad they weren't listening for the, the hour we chatted before. This. <laughs> <laughs> I love the pre-show. I, sometimes it's the after show. Sometimes it's the pre-show. And one of the things about doing this show for so many years is, is the relationships. And after all, that's the best part of life to me, you know, are the relationships that we haven't seen each other in a long time. We can keep in touch online a little bit, but we have our stories. And so... Yep. You, Julie Buxbaum, are very important to me, so I am thrilled to share this beautiful new book. It is, I, I posted about it last week, and I said what an important book it is, and I think some of the most important stories told through the lens of the YA vision are, are ways to talk to children, are ways to read what our children are reading, and to get these stories out, and this is this one is really, I mean, they're all great. I love your work. You know that. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate that. What was the spark for this one? Yeah, if you, so this book is semi-related to 9-11. I mean, it's set 15 years after the fact. But if you had told me, you know, even five years ago that I would consider writing a book that's even tangentially related to mm-hmm. 9-11, I wouldn't have believed you. Um, it seemed like it was something that was way too big yeah. and too heartbreaking and just too loaded to touch. Um, but then a few years ago, I saw this tweet um, from a teenager who I really admire who basically said something to the effect of, like, whining about having to learn about 9-11 every year on the anniversary. Wow. And I burst into tears when I saw the tweet. And it mm. occurred to me um, that there's this gigantic divide between people who, you know, were adults on 9-11 um, versus my, most of my readership who were either just born or hadn't even been born yet, right? And so they don't really understand what happened. To them, it's something that's like the equivalent of what Pearl Harbor is to us. A story, or maybe, a history. Or, or something that's, yeah, something that's like, yeah. or like landlines even, like things that are um, sort of in a dustbin of history. And mm-hmm. the truth of the matter is that not only did 9-11 not happen that long ago, but we're still grappling with a lot of the effects of it. Yeah. Um, not only on the like the global political stage, but all of those people um, who were there, and a lot of the rescue workers are getting sick. Yeah. And that's happening yeah. now, and they're dying. Um, and it was really important to me to to shed light on that, especially for this new readership who feels so disconnected from those events. It's amazing because those were some of the things I was thinking about. That that here we are in 2019, so we're almost 18 years. It's just incredible to even think about these numbers and then to look at these children and where, you know, how, where, how old they were, like that it could just be to some people like something that happened. And like you were saying, right. somebody that tweeted out that we're learning about or hearing about this again, you know, first anniversary, yeah. third anniversary, fifth anniversary. But and, to us, it's like there's a clear dividing line between the before and the after. Before right? and after, absolutely. And yeah. these are people who are just coming up in the after. And so they can't yeah. have the same visceral connection. Um, and I just think it's sure. really important that they understand. It's, and so I think to me this is one of those books, and I hope it is, that's assigned in schools, that's a conversation starter. Uh, those were all the things that I was thinking of when I was reading it and written with your classic humor, sarcasm, awesome <laughs> references, all things I love about a Julie Buxbound book. So thank you. I mean, I wanted to make sure it was accessible for for teenagers. You know, if if you yes, there's a yeah. reason why it's set 15 years after the fact. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was much easier to look at it, you know, from this backwards lens as opposed yeah. to at it directly. Um, you know, sometimes it's nice to hide the vegetables. 
Hey, <laughs> preaching <laughs> to the choir here, absolutely, right? I mean, you can put beans or you know whatever into a brownie or broccoli. And right, exactly. Just, just hot, put your brownies and zucchini in them. <laughs> you have hidden the vegetables. I like putting it that way, and because. This is really, I mean, YA is 12 and up, or I guess depending on the type of reader you have. Is that what it's recommended? Is that what they? I believe so. I think it's 12 and up for this one, where the guidelines actually are. I don't even know where they say that, but yes, 12 and up. Yeah. And it depends it on, you know, that. you know your own children. And so, mm-hmm. you know, I know that my kids were real precocious readers. And then as a parent um, or the adult near a child, you need to be prepared to talk to children about these things and I there was one of the things that I most loved when my kids were younger and we still read books together you know parallel reading or whatever you want to call it but we had uh, book clubs with the kids when they were little and it's a really great way to talk about things and you know connect them in a larger way and I'm speaking with Julie Buxbaum her brand new young adult title Hope and Other Punchlines is out just now. It is really important. It's a special book. It's such a good book. It's a Julie Buxbaum book. That's what you got to know. Thank you. I love your work. You <laughs> Thank know, you. I, I wish love. it was that simple, right? Well, it so should much. be, and it's got this gorgeous <laughs> cover, and I think that um, summer, summer reading's coming, and if you are signing your middle graders' books, why not put this on the list? I'm going to actually send that around to my teachers and remind them. I, I, yeah. every I think year, it's great I, for middle and high school. Yes. I think it works for both. I get so frustrated with those same old, same old lists, and I'm like, just let these kids read. But I'm, I don't want to go off on a mm-hmm. tangent. But this would be a really good one. Are they making a push to send out letters to all the schools right now? You should do that. I hope so. I don't moment. know. I mean, I, I have, I, yeah, it's all my time. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, they, I, I do believe that they're, they are reaching out to, okay, I think good. Random House has a whole teacher network that they reach out to. With okay. Things. Far be it for me uh, to tell them what to do. I'm talking and but, thinking at the same time because it's, you know, it's early May, so they still have five and six weeks and put this on the summer reading list. And then what a yeah. conversation. I agree yeah. with you. I do think it's uh, more than my previous two. Well, maybe the last, what to say next might have been appropriate too. But yes. I do yeah. think this one is a teaching book in a way that um, some of my previous work has not been. Some, I mean, I think Tell Me Three Things, which I love, is a really wonderful, fun book um, for teenagers to read. But it That's doesn't wonderful. have sort of this discussion element yeah. um, that I think the, this book brings for the classroom. And the discussion is so important because we need to keep talking about things. And I love the mm-hmm. way... You know, I knew that there was some spark, but that that you could see a tweet like that and think, hmm, something needs to be done about this, or you know, this yeah. is a good jumping off point for a book. What was it like writing this? It was really, really hard. I think this might have been um, my toughest book yet. It took a whole extra year than it was supposed to. Wow. Um, and I think it was hard for two reasons. One is the subject material obviously is hard. Sure. It was hard to write to two different audiences because yeah. I'm writing both to teenagers, but I also have a lot of crossover readership from my time writing for adults. Yeah. And so the book has to be something that's accessible to both. Um, and so I had to write about an event that feels very different to these two groups and, and bridge that divide. So that was really tricky. And then I think the really the hardest part was getting this book right tonally. So I'm yeah. writing about the after effects of 9-11, but I wanted to, I really wanted to be a funny book. Um, and one of my goals for this book was to make people laugh and cry and not only like make them laugh and cry throughout the, ex- the experience of the book, but sometimes even within the same page or in the same paragraph or maybe even the same sentence. Well, well um, done because that's how I, I just found myself. And I like the way you talk about a crossover audience and that can work both ways if an author mm-hmm starts out writing YA and goes jumps to adult. Mm-hmm. You and I were talking earlier about Judy Blundell's book. That's what mm-hmm. she did or going the other way, you know, um, keeping your audience going because I think that it's really, I mean, as a young person, I always read way ahead. And now as an adult, I love reading YA when it's a book that speaks to me. And Hope and Other Punchlines, the new book by Julie Buxbaum, does just that but I I can imagine the pressure to get it right and to then you've got to go back through your own mind where were you you know what were where were you at you know on September 11th what were you doing where where was your head at and look at all that's happened in the years since then I mean it's tough material so talk about 
our, our characters talk about hope a little bit and Noah and Jack and um, Kat sure. and you know, what, what people can yeah. know without, of course, again, no spoiling it. No spoilers. <laughs> so I, I will tell sort of the larger framework of the book. It's the story um, of a girl who's famous for having been in an iconic photograph on 9-11. Um, it is her first birthday, and she is caught by an AP photographer being rescued from the World Trade Center just before it collapses, and she's wearing a birthday hat and has a red balloon. And this image, is, it's, a, it's a fictional photograph, but in the book, this image has been spread far and wide, and she spends her entire childhood having been famous for being in this photograph. Um, the book is set 15 years later when she starts to feel the legacy of that day catching up with her, um, and she wants one last summer of anonymity. And so she takes a job at a camp two towns away from her hometown, um, hoping that she can start over and no one recognizes her as Baby Hope. And that's sort of the name. Her name is Abby, but her middle name is Hope. And Baby Hope is the name the media has sort of dubbed her. But on her first day at camp, she meets a boy named Noah who immediately recognizes her (laughs) and threatens to blow her cover. Um, And he convinces her. And when I say convinces, I really mean he blackmails her. To go well, on that's, journey that's a way of convincing. Some calls blackmail, <laughs> exactly. some other calls are persuasive. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever works. you got to do um, what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> blackmails her into going on a journey with him where they interview all the different people, all the different survivors in that iconic photograph. Um, and he has his own reasons for wanting to dig into the history of that day. Um, and it's the story of what happens when the stories we tell ourselves turn out not to be true and what do we put in their place um it's the story of love and loss and lifetime friendship the legacies of loss the the ways we use comedy to mask pain but also comedy as a way to burrow through pain noah is an aspiring comedian um which is really fun to write (laughs) he's adorable um yeah he's he's super cute i love super funny cute nerdy boys so do I. Who doesn't? <laughs> Is that not the best combination ever? Those are the words that, yeah. I don't know if at the time they appear that way. Maybe like thinking back to people who might have been like that in high school might not have been so appealing. It gets more appealing or or palm reflection. It's incredibly appealing, but that is... That is the perfect combination. And we're talking hope and other punchlines. Julie Bucksbaum's brand new book. That's a tongue cluster. Julie Bucksbaum's brand new book. It's coming out today, and you can find more information at juliebucksbaum.com and also Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You're everywhere. You're really good at keeping up with everything. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, social media and I waste a lot of time together. It's a very good way to, to put it, um, and you spend a lot of time with these characters when you're writing them. And you know, what was it like finishing this, especially this this book? Um, you know, what was it like? I don't know. Thinking about I, thinking about them. them. Yeah. Yeah. I, have, I mean, it because the book took so much longer than it was supposed to. By the time I was done, I was done. I yeah. mean, I was really really done. I, I kind of never wanted to look at it again. Um, and then I put it aside for a little while. You know, the publishing process allows you to send it off and you wait for copy edits and so you get a little space from it. Sure. And now I'm just really painfully proud of it. I really, uh-huh. I truly, truly love this book and I'm really proud of it. And I just hope readers like it even a fraction as much as I love it. Um, I'm I mean, so excited for readers because real, it is, it is really special for so many reasons. And I, I'm thrilled that we got to do this interview and to get to share it. And and my wheels are spinning because there are so many librarians, uh, YA librarians, and uh, YA book clubs, and you know people that I'm thinking of for this. Uh, I know that it will find its audience. You know, it's one of the things I love doing on Reading with Robin, of course. But it's. It's a really special book. It's a real standout. And, uh, you know, again, you know I'm a huge fan of your writing. This is a hard topic. And to to write a book so brilliantly, beautifully, it, to get this kind of topic the way you did, again, not giving anything away. I, I, I can't tell you how I pre- much I appreciate that. I never thought I'd get to this point. So to hear you say that means so much to me. Thank you. Oh, my pl- you're welcome. It's just my pleasure. I mean, 
you, you get very um, attached to characters, and I know that we've often heard people ask about, you know, do you think about this character? Are you going to bring back this character? It's, uh, readers get very attached, but I can imagine, especially with this one, this is this is a this is an important book. This is a really important book. Um, do you have plans past this book for these these characters, or are there? No. Not at the moment. I mean, I, I get asked all the time if I'm going to write a sequel to tell me three things. Oh, um, yeah. And I always say that the funny thing is the more you love your characters, the less you want to revisit them. Yeah. Not because you don't want to spend more time with them, but because in order to write a book, you have to torture them. Yeah. I mean, that's what yeah, a book is, right? Put, we need this you've got to put them called through. plot. <laughs> you've got to put them through the paces. I was thinking more of, um, and I know it's always a crapshoot and who knows for a series or for um, a play or for mm -hmm. some other format. It's just, um, I could just see this book living in different iterations. It's, I just think it's going to take its place with books that are really important to read or beloved, uh, beloved stories. And I really encourage readers to pick up a copy of Hope and Other Punchlines and then share it with your children. And they're probably parents that have never really had to have much of a conversation if their kids were of a certain age or it hasn't come up, depending on where you live or people that maybe feel, I don't know how, but more removed from September 11th. And I mean, I also think there are lessons beyond even the political or the, you know, I think there's so many different ways our lives get a, a, a line drawn between the before and after. Mm. Um, sometimes it's a huge event like September 11th, and sometimes it's a car accident or, you know, I can right. think of a million horrible things that I'm not going to mention right now. Yeah, let's not so, do that. <laughs> um, a diagnosis or whatever it is, I think yeah. um, that's something that if you don't understand 9-11, you can relate on some other personal level. Um, so I wanted the story in some ways to be bigger than bigger just than the me. events that, we're, exactly. that I'm talking about. That, well, and I think about the, the uh, Hope and Cat and their friendship. And what happens with their, I mean, even discussing or especially discussing what happens when friends veer off in different directions and what the, there's part in the book where um, Hope's father is talking to her. You know, they're concerned about her friendship and her social life and what's mm -hmm. happened with her friend. I mean, talk a little bit about that. It's like, you know, high school yeah, never I over. Yeah, it was important to me that there be two books in one or the sense that both parts of the book could stand on their own. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully they blend seamlessly, but the idea is that there's this part of the book that, you know, deals with the after effects of 9-11. And then there's a whole part of the book that's just the story of a teenage girl. Oh, girl, right. A story of a girl, right? What, what all of YA is, the story of a kid. Um, yeah. A coming of age story. And I think that the story of Abby... Um, and her best friend, who in the beginning of the book, she's no longer friends with. And, we, and as the book progresses, we start to understand why. Mm -hmm. and, what's, and this isn't a spoiler, I don't think. One of the things that's happened between them is that they just grew apart. It, it's, not, it's nothing gigantic, actually, or even particularly dramatic. Um, and I think that happens a lot in the high school years where, you know, friendships take turns. They do, and sometimes it's hard for the parents. They feel like their kid's the one that maybe got left out. When yep. truly they do change, and there's so much change that happens in those years, and not everybody's comfortable in that same direction. And so, because there's Abby is, uh, has a fake social media account, and so there's that whole element really, which didn't exist in 2001. 2000, I mean, not really. And so, as teenagers, they're dealing. Uh, Cats encouraged her, right, to set up a fake account, so she knows she can watch what's going on. But being always mindful of not wanting, you know, people wanting to know who she was or being identified as the baby in that picture. I'm calling yeah. her Hope, so Abby, right? Yeah. yeah well, I mean, it's Abby Hope. It doesn't matter. Right? She's baby. Just so, just Abby, to confuse, it? just not to confuse the, uh, <laughs> the listeners. listeners. <laughs> yes, her name is Abby, right? The baby Hope, and so um, so much of what kids can glean and feel part of or totally left out of as social media continues yeah. to define a generation. Um, I mean, in some ways, I think, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I think that Baby Hope is some like the original meme in some ways. Um, yeah. She, and when she's now, she's experiencing the other side of that, you know, the FOMO while watching her friends all hang out and she's not there. It's, yeah, um, it's very interesting. Which is a particularly difficult thing that teenagers have to go through that we fortunately dodged. 
a big, big topic, absolutely, and I just wonder where that goes. I mean, I'm always thinking, well, it couldn't go. Just the things that you just can't even imagine have already happened. So that is, you know, growing up with that distraction, obsession, and a whole other way of living and presenting yourself. It's almost kind of like, well, that's the online persona. And even for kids to really understand what they're putting out there and, and what mm-hmm. what's important about it and how long – it lives as in forever. <laughs> so, right. um, there are so many things to talk about. It's just such a treat of a novel, and it's Julie Buxbaum's Hope and Other Punchlines. Find her at juliebuxbaum.com. You have events set up. I, um, I haven't checked. I don't know if you are you coming to the East Coast or? I am. I'm coming to New York. I'll be at Books of Wonder in New York on May 9th, I believe, at 6 o'clock. With oh, Lockhart, you're which coming. will be really fun. Oh, you're going to be here. I'm not. Oh, maybe. Oh, I didn't know. No. Maybe did I know that and think there was? Well, I have an event on the uh, eighth in Boston. I think maybe I did know that. And when I know I can't go to something, I immediately think it's not happening. <laughs> See, that's a really smart way to deal with FOMO. <laughs> well, I have totally have FOMO. I would never want to miss anything. Now I'm like, yeah, I might. Maybe I did know that. So, on the ninth at Books of Wonder on the West. Is that on the west side? Um, I believe it's on West 18th Street. It's okay. the downtown. Okay. So they have two of them. Okay, that's all right. That's the other one I was thinking about. So it all comes back to Julie and I were talking about an event that happened on the west side years ago. <laughs> so it, it all comes back, and it comes back around. I will post about it, though. So that Thank is you. happening on the 9th in New York City where all fun stuff happens. And um, before I let you go, what are you reading? Um, oh, you're listening to – you did actually tell me you're listening to Judy Blundell's book. Yes, I'm listening to that on audio. I am reading, I always like juggle a bunch of different books, but I'm reading right now Richard Powered Orpheo, which is a, not his most recent book. Um, it's a few books ago, I believe, mm-hmm. and it's. I mean, he's just brilliant and it's fantastic. Um, so you read one on, and you're listening to one. Yeah, I usually. I mean, normal. I just finished a bunch, so I'm not. I normally am reading one hardcover, one paperback usually adult and a paperback in YA and then oh, I like that. To a book. It's a little poo-poo and then sometimes platter. there's an, yeah, sometimes <laughs> there's even more. I, I like to have a big rotation. Um, it's important to have right, so you can have different things going in different ways. I tried I've tried a few times to listen. I don't know if it's just me or it just doesn't it's not working for me. I'm not maybe if I maybe I'd need to be in the car and just totally listening. But I I just get too distracted. I can't focus when I'm listening. I'm I'm super picky about what I can listen to. Yeah. I can't listen to anything too literary um, okay. on audio, but I I love it because I use I listen when I'm doing things that I can't stand, like dishes <laughs> or cleaning my house or traffic. You know, so you, all these things uh, that you have to endure in modern life. I get I it makes it way more pleasurable to me to, to be listening to a you know a fun book. Yeah, I think I need to do it when. Yeah, maybe that's the trick. But I I find it very lulling and sleep inducing and that's not oh. a good, that's not a good thing but yeah. i but i never say never except for when it comes to game of thrones we also talked about that <laughs> affair but i am going to um i'm going to say goodbye and thank you so much for appearing on reading with robin it's hope and other punchlines julie Buxbaum. this is just a great novel and i am thrilled to share it with Everybody that asks me, what should I read this summer? What are my kids reading? What can I read with my children? And it is it's for you. everybody, 12 and up and for everybody. If you have a precocious reader, maybe 10. My kids would have been reading this earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that can Thank pick up Valley so at the Dolls can read uh, Hope and Other Punchline. <laughs> um, exactly. I, I love it. Thank you so much.